In the previous video, we looked at how we can utilize completion handlers to resolve a common asynchronous programming problem. In this video, we'll learn how NS Operation Queue abstracts away the complexities of manual threading. We'll see how adding the right code to the background thread and foreground thread can improve the user experience. In most cases, our application will need to do more than one thing at a time. One of those things is responding to the user's input and making sure that the user interface is responsive. Users have little patience for an interface that appears to be frozen. There are a few ways of ensuring that your interface always remains responsive to the user. We're going to discuss an approach utilizing operation queues. We create operation queues using the NS Operation Queue class, which is designed to manage our queues of operations. These operations are much like closures that contain code to perform chunks of work. Now, operation queues are not the same thing as threads. The operation queue system manages a pool of threads and allocates what it needs whenever work is being done. By utilizing operation queues instead of threading manually with NSThread, we abstract away some of the complexities around threading, like locking and unlocking threads, for instance. Furthermore, Operation queues have an awareness of the computing resources available to them, which allows them to balance the operations across as many CPU cores as is available to it. Let's open up our Game of Life application and uncover a use case for an operation queue. In the previous video, we resolved an issue in our code using asynchronous programming. We have another issue to resolve with our call to get scores from the server. If you build and run your application, you'll see a Menu button. Tap it to review the menu options. The menu offers different views into the leaderboards. If you click the Most Iterations menu item, an application will quickly reach out to the server and attain the latest scores, assemble the score objects, and then display them for us. Let's give it a try. All right, this took a little while, because we just loaded 50,000 records, which, needless to say, we probably wouldn't do in a real application, right? Other than a lengthy loading time, you may not have noticed that the menu button was completely frozen while the application was downloading and assembling objects to our data. Let's give it another run, but this time, try tapping the menu button while the application is working. It's completely frozen. That is, until our application is finished crunching our data set then it slides open at its earliest opportunity. This is happening because we've blocked the main thread. We should be doing this type of operation on a background queue. This is an easy fix with operation queues. Let's open up the high score table view controller.swift file. If we look at our view did load, we have a method called get scores. Let's scroll up to get scores and see what we've got. Here, we see an asynchronous method call to an instance of a class called connect we can see that our trailing closure does some processing on a result set. This happens to be a pretty resource-consuming operation when you consider it's operating over 50,000 records. But remember how closures work. This closure is invoked elsewhere, so there may be some more code to evaluate. Let's open up our Connect class. In our Connect class, we see a function named getAllScores that has a completion handler. This is our culprit. If we look inside Alamo Fire's completion handler, we see that we're doing a small print operation as well as calling our completion handler. This code, along with the code in our completion closure, is currently being called in the main queue. Let's go ahead and move it to a background queue. Define a constant named background queue and give it a value of NS operation queue. This operation queue will automatically be added as a background queue. Next, we'll wrap the code we want to be on the background queue using a method from our instance called add operation with block. It's important to note that in Objective-C, closures are known as blocks. You'll encounter the term block from time to time in the Cocoa framework, and when you do, just remember that it's interchangeable with the word closure. Now that we have our code wrapped in a background queue, let's build and run our application and see how this works. I'll open my menu and load the most iterations tab, and then I'll try navigating. And it works. Well, sort of. Now our menu works, but our results never display. Why do you think that is? This happened because we were setting our score on the background thread, and in order to update our interface, we need to be on the main thread. 
This is an easy enough fix. Up in our property observer for our scores variable, we see our call to tableview.reloadData. We can wrap this call in a main queue, operation queue, in the same way we did for our background queue. So let's define a constant. We'll name it main queue and set its value to nsoperationQueue.MainQueue. And just as before, we'll wrap the code that we want on our main queue. That should do it. Let's build and run and test our table view controller one more time. Navigate to the Most Iterations option, and we see our menu is responsive, and our data appears as we'd expect it to. In this video, we have seen how we can improve the user experience by properly utilizing operation queues. In the next video, we'll look under the hood of NS Operation Queue and investigate Grand Central Dispatch.